in terms of barriers to offshore wind, I would uh, mention mentioned two things. First one is uh, maritime special planning, which is about how do we as a society want to use the sea that is available uh, in the oceans. We have, of course, a lot of uh, tradition to use that for, for fishing. Uh, we also have a lot of uh, environmental uh, protection that needs to continue. Uh, we also have uh, shipping interests. We have military uh, requirements that needs to be taken care of. But all of this needs to happen through the lens of reaching net zero. Because if we just continue with the current kind of business as usual in terms of, of planning of how we use uh, the space at sea, it will not be possible to reach net zero by, by uh, 2050. The time is, is just a bit uh, too short for that to, to happen. The second thing that I would uh, mention as a barrier to offshore wind is uh, the build out of uh, grids. Then I'm thinking of transmission grids, so electricity grids, and that is uh, onshore, getting the, the electricity to the consumer, but it's also offshore and how we organize ourselves in order to get the electricity harnessed from the offshore wind turbines and, and getting it to shore in the most uh, effective way and then of course onto the uh, consumer uh, on land. Those are the, the two main barriers. If I were to make one recommendation to the new uh, European uh, Commission, uh, I would focus on getting uh, a strategy around offshore wind because we need to get it uh, started on the maritime special planning and to get uh, the grids built and that requires a bit of dedicated focus and it requires cooperation because if we do this in a national way it will be very suboptimal and the EU is there really to unleash the best of cooperation among member states. So I think it's a, it's a perfect job for the new commission.